It's Christmas Day, and what a beautiful day it is. My, oh my, it's beautiful. Uh, anyway, uh, this uh, here's a job waiting for me, fun. Uh, I thought I'd get to it this year, but I, I didn't. Uh, but I, I film it now because the furnace is where it's going to go. Uh, this is a different furnace, a different building. And on the right and on the left are the makings, and the rest of it's here piled in front, are the makings of, it'll be a total of eight flying buttresses. True flying buttresses. Uh, but their purpose is not going to be to prevent the wall. Well, yes it will, because there's going to be an, a, a masonry arch over that furnace. But I mention it because back there at the barn, I've decided, well, I, I think I already mentioned it yesterday. I think it's going to call for a flying, some flying buttresses. And I'm going to go up there in just a bit to show you my new thought on that. But I've got the pigs down here now working on uh, archaeology in this area. And I'm helping them by moving some of the inedible stuff away. But I keep throwing the corn down in there and they, they dig at it. And uh, all this is going to be so much fun to put back together. Uh, that's the building that collapsed over my sawmill. But that's kind of another, there, there's no pressure on that right now. There, there are the parts, or a lot of the parts to that sawmill. But I'm going to go up there and show you my new thought. Okay, the pigs are doing their scavenging hunt. I scattered corn around here so they keep digging in here. They've started actually to root up some of those stones. In, in that pile, uh, which I've, well, I've at the moment concluded that that was an entryway into that, uh, I almost want to say prehistoric barn. But what's new is I've decided that I'm going to use a bench, uh, uh, a masonry bench to come up above the level of the floor to get me higher on that foundation. And I'm going to use that masonry bench in effect leaning against that foundation like a flying buttress. But I'm not going to use it with the uh, with the uh, like a Roman semicircular arch or a medieval uh, or a pointed arch, but rather uh, with a cobalt arch. I think I can do that. And I think it'll work just as well. But by making it a bench, that way I can come much higher uh, on that wall uh, and uh, and uh, add so much more weight to make sure that wall doesn't keep pushing out. And I'm going to build this area. I am going to run it out all the way to the hillside there to sturdy that up. I definitely want to do that. And I'm probably going to run it all the way out to the corner of the building, past this entryway, and keep that walkway going out through there. But I'm, in any case, I'm going to build from the center out. I'm going to build this. I'll build the bench first, and then I'll build the floor out that way, and I'll build the floor out that way. And today I'm going to take that log down, and I'm going to start seeing what I've got here to work with. So for the moment, Oh, one other thing, I want to mention my German friends, uh, the Hawklings, Shirley and Thomas. They uh, can't stand the idea that I say I, I often build from the top down. And they said, no, no, you, you have to build from the bottom up. <laughs> and I insist, no, uh, I can I build from the top down. Later on, I'll try to explain that more, why I say that. Uh, also, people very often will build, say, from the left, from one end to the other end. But very often, I don't do that. Matter of fact, more often, I build from the middle outward. And that's what I'm going to do here. There, the pigs have had their lunch, and in their company, I, I took those logs down. Boy, boy, those chestnut ones were really rotted. I'll put them back somehow, just for their weight, and certainly to keep them since they're American chestnut. But um, <laughs> I was wasn't sure how I was going to handle that long one myself, and it broke in half at a at a mortise, which is sensible. 
Uh, I'm going to take that plastic off because it was just to protect the animals from the wind. I'm going to fold that one up and then take another look at this, but I'm not going to do it right away. This is just such a beautiful day. I'm going to go take a look at my irrigation system and and some other things. It's Christmas Day. Oh, I, I know what I was going to say. I'm, I'm going to get myself, I've talked about a lot, I'm going to get myself a better camera. I mean, this is like only an $80 camera or, or less. And I think for even less than that, I can get a better camera. I mean, this is just a child's toy, I think. But I've used it for, I don't know, 10 years. One of my pigs stayed back a boar to uh, see what else he could find in this manure pile. Now I'm going to be looking for uh, ideas about this manure pile. Uh, can What should I do with it? Can I compost it? Should I roof it? Uh, you know, should I add, I don't know, various things. At the moment I've just been getting the manure out of the barn letting the pigs go through. Oh, and there's Petunia, as predicted. She came through here. I'll show you her doorway, Petunia's gate. I'll show you how she gets up there, which I could easily block. It's right over here. I don't even have to turn the camera off. Uh, the chicken was standing in the middle of her door a little bit ago. There it is. Right above the shadow of my head. That's there to let the water out, uh, but it also serves to let Petunia in. That's where I was. Now I'm down here at the... What's the name of this? <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, it's one of the principal water supplies, and you can see, I think, uh, by the discolored water, the pig just ran through here and made it muddy. But there's quite a bit of water coming. I, I could shut it off. But why I stopped, really, was because back here, you see that's clear? Uh, I, I think that this is not water just coming from there backing up. That spring has started once again, and I'm about to walk in there, muddy it up a little bit, and do a little digging, and see if it'll show where the water's coming from. Sure enough, it's running into that, that pool, but not strong enough yet to be coming out. Well, there it wants to come out. Uh, going out to join the uh, canal, supply the leap uh, through these blocks, set like they are for two tire tracks later. I bought myself some new boots, aren't they nice? $20. Um, and they don't leak, that's what's so nice about them. Um, and uh, right away I could see, as soon as I looked, I could see where the water was coming from. <clears throat> it's coming from right there. See how it's clear? If I gave it a little bit of time, it would clear right up. There you can see it. So the source of that water is back in that direction. I'm sort of chasing it back there, you can see. Back there is where I was. And you can actually hear the water running. This is its destination. This, this is going to, this is Joyce Hut. It's a folk hut. I probably will do, uh, re uh, put the top on this, uh, this winter still. But the water's running in. And there, I think you can see it's running out. And it'll go down, or it is going down here. And it's going to power that a huge water wheel, 24 foot, probably about in diameter. That's just the hub. But in the winter, uh, it'll power it from underneath. It's going to be what's called a pitchback wheel. It'll turn, the top will turn toward us. Uh, and it's in the, in the spring, that wheel's going to be powered by a source some 20 feet over my head that'll be actually it'll rest on the top of Joyce Hut. And Joyce Hut is one of the five here who are the five other Katale six. There's Wayne Hut, there's Mercedes Hut, there's either Ed's Hut or Pat's Hut, and there's either Ed's Hut or Pat's Hut. This is going to be the Katale 6 cluster. All the stuff's here. 
And just the fun of putting it together, and this time putting it together so it doesn't, so the pigs don't knock it apart. Oh, I love that sound.